how do you apply for a job, how do you represent yourself in the best way, you know, how do you tailor your applications to make sure that if it was your CV and a another candidate's CV, why is yours different, what makes you different? We don't care so much about your CV, we look at the portfolio. Passion, artistic skills, technical skills, that's the idea. We, we've had interviews where um, they've just presented entirely the wrong type of, of um, content for us. There are people that, you know, that don't engage with you, they haven't really um, got any concept of the type of work that we do as a studio. The hardest thing to do is sell yourself in pa on paper and to write why you're good. You express yourself in your work when you have to write words. It's really hard. It's really, really hard. You are amazing and you need to, you need to show it off and you have your amazing CV, you have this great profile and CV and all together it just turns into something magical, I suppose. It's very important when you go to an interview, first of all, uh, know the company you are going to. Because what we find many, many times is people that doesn't know anything about the company, or what do we do, or what they are able to do for us. To tell us what projects they're interested in, what appeals to them about working with us, that engages with us as a company and doesn't just want to talk about their skills, that there needs to be that two-way relationship. It's surprising how much like people forget to like check our website and see what kind of work we do. Like I see a lot of people coming in and just asking, so what do you do? And, and it's, at least if you're gonna apply for a job, you probably wanna know beforehand what that job's gonna be. It needs to be a two-way conversation. It can't be us talking about the studio the full time, it can't be the individual talking about themselves. The full time, you need, you need to feel that connection between uh, the company and the individual. And, I think if you maybe come directly from school or you're not very experienced, I think you can apply anyway. Sometimes we have junior roles, so that could be a good start. Then we don't expect you to be like the, the perfect expert. And even if you apply and don't get the position, you can always apply later. But as I said, it's uh, very important that you keep your portfolio updated. We have supervisors that have applied at Blur like four or five times and been rejected five times before they actually made it and then now they're supervising and, and so don't get discouraged. I think the best way to know if you're up to par with what we're looking for is to just, it's very easy to go on ArtStation or like one of those websites and then just look up for one of our artists because like most of them have some presence online and then just see what they're doing and see if what you're doing is comparable. Um, if it's, there's a very big, big difference, then you might need to work at it a little bit more. If it's almost there, then just call us and do it. If you are a concept artist, uh, you have to, to prepare a very good portfolio, but just with the best work. To me, there's nothing worse than someone who shows stuff and then tells you, yeah, but this one, I know it's not pretty good. And well, then if you know, then don't show me. If the candidate doubt if something is good enough to include it, it's better to don't include it. <laughs> okay. Just they have to include the, the work uh, that they really feel proud of. I prefer to see that they can do a lot of things, so then I know that they are like productive. But I don't want to see the sketches they did in school like many years ago. So. Don't put 2,000 images with like every little you know, scribble that you've done on a napkin. Um, I think you can have a couple of images that show the process that you're going through from like you know, a rough thumbnail all the way to the, the final concept. But I think if you're gonna show the process, you need to show the final product and it needs to look really good. Uh, otherwise, we're mostly interested in final products. Don't necessarily put anything that's in your own opinion that might be offensive to another client or another artist. It's also good if you can show animations and effects and uh, we really like it when you have a technical competence so you can implement your own graphics into an engine for instance. We want to see that versatility, that adaptability across the portfolio. Uh, we want to understand why they've chosen certain pieces of artwork to put in their portfolio 
um, especially in relation to us as a company. We are actually right now looking for more of, of a profile that is able to express to the rest of the departments how this 2D is going to look like eventually. So for example, in color, it's very good if we see an illustration, but we are looking for a color script, uh, color keys, character design, we're looking for model sheets, expressions. I missed this kind of um, language. If you're a concept artist, put uh, concept arts, but not only those fancy illustrations that you have on your art station, when, you know, this is the stuff that gets you the followers. We like to see this, it's cool to see this, but it's really important for us to see how a person thinks, how they research, what stuff they use, what inspired them, uh, how they came up with different models, with 10 different models, and then they pick one. For instance, if you're good at doing concepts, that's not always enough for us. We want to see that you can like, finish the art too. So color is working for the lightning department, so they have to understand. Um, sets and props designs are working for the modelers, character design is working for the models. So we're looking for how you understand volumes, uh, how you make the characters you know, being understood by the animators, how they sleep, the, the faces. The faces need to be very, the, you know, the expressions, uh, of, it is very technical. Even for the riggers, we need to see how the muscles work. If you have um, a 3D artist, a concept artist that knows how to animate, to model, like that's something that you can see in the portfolio. The, the biggest problem of portfolios is that people are usually defined, their portfolios are usually defined by the projects that they worked on. And if you worked as a freelancer for Korean companies for the last five years, you will have brilliant illustrations, but in like, you know, Asian style. And now the question is, can you actually create something which is not in this style? Maybe you can, but we need to see this as well, because in the end of the day, we have to decide with who will move forward. Everybody puts a portfolio together differently because also the portfolio is an extension of who they are. You have to be really careful how you manage that because art isn't a job, it's a lifestyle. And everything that they do is an extension of who they are. So sometimes, you know, you can't expect a candidate to strip their portfolio, that's really tricky. But break it down, you know, if you do environments, you do characters um, and you do assets, you know, have an online portfolio, but break it into folders, you know, show what your characters are. So you've got characters, you do 10 characters, here's my characters. If you have a fantasy style, you could have that in one section, and if you have a casual style also, you can have that in another section, and then you show which one you want to link to, depending on the position you apply for. Then clients, uh, you know, don't have a lot of time. A client I spoke to last week had 150 applications for their job in one week. You know, that's one person going through all of those as well as doing their own day job. It's not possible. So think a minute, maybe two minutes maximum every time a client looks at a candidate. We're all different, but I prefer that I get an instant overview. And then when I open up an image, I want to be able to just click through to the next. I don't want to jump back and forth every time. So that, that it can also be good to just have all images like in a row on a page. That's totally okay. So you just scroll. They want to be able to get to what they want to see. So if you break it down like that, it you know, you still keep that extension of who you are, but you also are it's in a way still tailored enough so the client can just go straight to what they want to see.